Okay, my friends, here it is. The first video that is going to give you a taste of fermenting and preserving the garden harvest. Now, for this video, we're gonna be doing the classic sauerkraut. And I've done it many different ways, and this is the best recipe of all. Very simple, very ancient. But this sauerkraut is really just the gateway to a much greater life of fermenting and preserving foods. So, watch the whole video, watch the process, Practice it, do it yourself, because cabbage is the easiest, this is the easiest thing to ferment. So we gotta start with this, okay? And it's one of the best, I eat it all the time. But watch the whole video through, okay? And then uh, either go to the garden and uh, harvest them, or if you don't have any yet, then go to the store and get a couple and make it, because it's you gotta train the mind to understand the fermentation process, and that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, but also make some incredible sauerkraut. Now, the reason that I'm putting this video out right now exactly on this day, uh, well, this time, is because uh, you probably have some maybe of the spring cabbages left in the garden that need to be harvested, and also you still have enough time where you can plant fall cabbages. So uh, it's a win-win, okay? So get the sauerkraut in your life. And this is light years beyond anything you could ever get in a store. So if, if you got images, oh, I don't like sauerkraut, oh, it's mushy, or something, Put that all out of your mind, my friends, because this stuff is a superfood, okay? It is bursting with life and probiotics and all kinds of, we take the soil food web essentially and, and we rearrange it and we put it into the food and then we put it into us and it becomes a part of us and it creates abounding health and vitality and energy and well-being and uh, thoughts conducive to, uh, to peace and harmony in the mind. So, that being said, let me take you into the kitchen and show you exactly how to make this stuff, my friends. Okay, my friends, the first thing we want to do is go out into the garden and harvest the freshest cabbage we possibly can. Because we are capturing the microorganisms that are already on the cabbage. And so, the fresher the cabbage is, the better the ferment is. So when we harvest the cabbage we always want to remember to leave the roots leave the root system of the plant to nourish the soil the next step is to remove the tough outer leaves and you do want to do this step because the outer leaves are very tough and fibrous and will make it unpleasant so remove the leaves until there is just the nice tender succulent inner core then you will want to cut it up and prepare it now, the cabbage can be prepared in whatever way you want, but I have found it best to do it this way, to cut it in half and then in half again, and then take each quarter and remove the small portion of the core, because the core is a little more difficult to ferment. So for this time, just discard it or compost it. Then uh, you will take it and cut it into quarter inch strips in this way. And that gives you a good variety of uh, long strips, but also small uh, pieces. And so make sure that it's all uniform. That's what you want. Now that everything is cut up and in the bowl, you will add the sea salt. Two teaspoons per pound of cabbage. That is the correct ratio. Add a little bit of salt, massage it in, add more cabbage, massage it in. The goal is to have the salt come in contact with all the cabbage. Then, after a couple of minutes of massaging, you will see that the salt has begun to draw out the moisture in the cabbage. Continue this until the water starts to, the liquid starts to run off. When you wring it, it can run off. That's when you know that it's working. So continue massaging, continue massaging, 10 minutes or so. Once the liquid starts to run freely from the mixture, now you add the caraway seed and the juniper berries, one teaspoon per pound of cabbage of each. And you add that and then you give it another massage so that everything is nice and mixed together. And you should see the cabbage has started to wilt down a bit and has started to really get the moisture drawn out of it so that when you wring it, you want the juices to really flow freely like this. That's how you know, okay, it is ready. Once the juices are running freely, then we will put it into our fermentation chamber. Now, we want something that is taller than it is wide because we need to pack 
the sauerkraut in there until it is fully submerged in its own brine. This is of utmost importance, my friend. When you ferment stuff, you see this brine. When you ferment stuff, it has to be submerged in the brine. Anything that is above the brine is going to be exposed to air and it is most likely going to mold and is going to spoil the batch. So I'm going to use my fist, you can use whatever you want, and mash down the sauerkraut until it begins to submerge itself in its own juice. I cannot stress enough how important this aspect is. Keep pushing it down, keep forcing out all the air bubbles, keep crunching it down. Then you will take one of those outer leaves that we took off in the beginning and fold it or whatever you have to do to create a sort of cap that helps to keep everything down. Now I want to reiterate that we do not add any additional brine if we're using fresh cabbage. All of this moisture you see here, this liquid, is what has been drawn out of the cabbage itself. So the next step we're going to take two cups of water and two tablespoons of sea salt to make an actual brine. Now I will show you the reason that we are doing it this way is because we are going to take a gallon Ziploc bag, a very secure one, and we are going to make a weight that keeps everything submerged and keeps the air from reaching the substance. Now the reason that we are using the brine and we're not just filling it with water, listen because this comes from personal experience over the years, is that on the rare chance that the bag leaks, it will not ruin your sauerkraut ferment. If you just fill the bag with water and your fingernail punctures it or something, it will ruin the ferment. So fill it with the brine and gently push it down so that all the air is out of the mixture. This is going to act as a weight to keep everything secure and below the level of the brine. This is the way, my friends, you must make sure everything stays submerged. Now we will simply cover it with a breathable lid and place a rubber band around it. You do not want gnats or anything like that to get into it. Once the breathable lid is secured, then put into a place where it will not be disturbed, preferably at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. Then you let it ferment for at least three weeks and then you begin tasting it every couple of days to see how it is to your liking. The longer you wait, the more soured and the more crunchy it becomes. So the more you wait, the more intense it becomes. But when it's to your liking, then remove it from this container and place it into individual mason jars and then place in the refrigerator for up to a year or more. Or you can even leave it out on the counter for a couple of months like this. But it will get very intense, my friends. And now you have fermented. Okay, my friends, so there you have learned how to make your own probiotic and prebiotic uh, microbial rich superfood that is going to keep for a long time. It will keep in the refrigerator. This one is from last year, almost exactly a year ago, and it's still incredible. It just gets more complex with time. Uh, also, no doubt our ancestors just left it out. They didn't have refrigeration, and it will keep for a couple, two to three months like that, but it will get very intensely flavored, but it's still good. So. Uh, get making this stuff, get learning and understanding the process of fermentation because videos coming in the future are we're going to be fermenting all kinds of stuff like this. Okay, this is the other part of gardening is preserving the stuff for the times when the garden isn't here, especially if you live in the cold country uh, like many of us do. So, my friends, if you gain something from the video, leave a comment. Doesn't matter what it is, first thing that comes to mind, just leave a comment. It tells the algorithm that the video needs to be showed to more people. And a big thank you to all the people that are using the link in the description uh, to make a financial donation to the PayPal account. That is deeply appreciated and uh, I see you guys. So thank you very much. That inspires me to keep inspiring uh, and making these. All right, see you next time.